India is looking to leverage artificial intelligence for social good. The country will be hosting the AI Impact Summit next month with a vision to shape the technology for inclusive growth. One person who believes AI can play a major role in addressing societal changes in South Asia is Arundhati Bhattacharya of cloud-based software platform Salesforce. For CNA, Rebecca Vandan spoke to her about the opportunities and risks associated with the rapid rise of AI. If you feel that the opportunities are far greater, then the risk is worth it. And that's exactly what I see with the advent of AI. Especially, you know, given the fact that the world demography is changing very rapidly, it has its own applications, both for those nations which are growing very fast and those nations that are young. But in respect of nations like ours, like India and its neighboring countries, which are young countries but very populous countries, I think the opportunities are far greater. And the reason why I say this is that there is no brick and mortar way in which we can deliver the kind of services that we need to deliver to our people. And it's only technology that can enable it. India is under a lot of pressure to create jobs for its young population. But at the same time, there's so much talk about tech replacing people in certain roles. What are your thoughts on this? So, you know, this is a you know, normal talk whenever there is a big change uh, in uh, the way we do our work. Uh, it's happened in the earlier industrial revolutions. Uh, there was a time when people said, well, if cars came on the road, what would happen to the stable owners and to the grooms and to the coachmen? Well, they all actually created garages and became, uh, you know, car mechanics or created automobiles. I don't think our standard of living went back. It only went forward. I do not believe this time, too, that it's going to slide back. It's going to become better. Now, what's going to happen to the people that you are talking about? They will upskill. They will do jobs that will require more of critical thinking, creative thinking, empathy. In fact, I personally believe that this kind of technology is what will make humans more human because it will give them time to do those, you know, human outreach, which today is taken up by the screen. Because you are so wedded to your screen, just doing repetitive jobs, which now your personal agent can do, that you will actually have the time to reach out and have a conversation. At the recent CES tech event in Las Vegas, where Salesforce had quite a big presence, we saw a lot of advancements in terms of AI, but also humanoid robots. What are your thoughts on that pace of advancement and what this means? So, you know, that is something that is amazing. The pace of advancement, the way technology is evolving, it's never been more swift. And yes, you know, robotic agents are expected to be the next wave of this entire agentic revolution that we are seeing. And again, I do believe that this will help us in the standard of living that we have, the quality of living. For instance, think about things like mining, which is actually very dangerous for human beings. Why is it that we need to uh, endanger human lives while doing things in dangerous places? Do you really think that AI will be used in a major way to address these challenges that India is facing, healthcare, poverty, education. India has 600,000 villages. There is no way that I'm going to get medical experts into all of those villages, right? But does that mean that the people living in those villages will never have good healthcare, will never have good medical attention? Not necessarily, because this is the place where you can use the forthcoming AI wave to actually help out. And when you're talking about humanoids, for instance, you know, actually taking readings and things like that can be done by those, uh, those kinds of robotics, you know, so it can easily be done by those and reflected back into the screens of people sitting at centers. How do you go about it? I think going about it is the main thing. And there, I think there are two or three things that we have to get in order. First of all, we have to understand that if you're going to use technology, it needs to be understood how you use it. You talked about the risks, right? And the risks are there. So how do you ensure that you have the proper guardrails to ensure that the usage is proper and not improper? 
So that is something that needs to be taken care of through policy and actions. Okay, it's not something where you can just do. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you you can't just say it and leave it out there. It is something you may not want to regulate it very strongly, but you do want oversight on how it is being used. So there has to be governance structures around the use of technology. So yes, there is a lot of work to be done, both in the skilling area and in creating the awareness area. But I believe this is the answer and we need to take it.